It's the award-winning radio program. Relax and enjoy. And now your host. Hi, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. My name is Caesar, and I am your voice in the desert. The, welcome to our daily podcast where we talk about the Word of God. Here we go into details of to the Word of God according to His Scripture. Okay, and this is our form of being able to reach out to the world and complete the great commission of taking the Word of God to all the creatures of the earth, to every human being around the world. We speak to you purely biblical. We do not speak of our own accord. We speak according to the Holy Spirit and we speak according to what is said in the Word of God. So in every message that you hear on A Voice in the Desert, you are to expect uh, the verses where you are to verify that message, where you can read it for yourself, okay, and know what things are going to be about and to see if it truly matches the word of God. Because now in days, there are many false prophets out there speaking what they say is the word of God, and it's not the word of God, okay? It is their interpretation. And we're not here to interpret God's word. We are here to say God's word as God's word was intended to be. Once again, I want to welcome you to A Voice in the Desert, where millions of people listen to us around the world and made us the number one Christian podcast online. Why? Because we speak the truth of the Word of God. So with that, we leave you with our next message for today. God bless you all. Hi all, welcome to A Voice in the Desert segment, Manna from Heaven. Today we're going to cover a topic which is very sensitive. Um, we hear about it a lot in the radio, in the news, and it's about suicide. People taking away their own lives. But in this time, and in this segment, I want to tell you the title is a Christian suicide. What happened when a Christian suicides himself? We've seen in the radios, we've seen on media, online, we see pastors resigning to their faith, saying that they no longer believe in God, that they rather trust the things of the world which they can control. And they abandon God. Pastors that led a lot of people. Pastors that have suicided themselves. Christians that have killed themselves. What does the word of God tell us on this? This is a taboo that is not spoken in most churches. But we are not most churches. We are a voice in the desert. And we speak to you the truth of the word of God. Because we need to make sure that everyone that belongs to Christ, everyone that comes to Christ, gets to their final destination, which is home, heaven. That's where I want you to go. So when you're listening to this message, I pray that you listen very carefully and that the Holy Spirit speaks to you who whispers to you and lets you know and interpret whatever I am saying that you may not understand that the Holy Spirit may interpret it and reveal it to you. For this is a very sensitive topic and one that is not talked about in churches now and days. But we have to because today the world is in extreme turmoil. Satan is doing everything he can to destroy everything he can because he knows he's lost the battle. So he's going to try to take as much lives as possible because every life that he takes, it's a dart. It's an arrow in our guard's heart. 
he feels every single death that is taken away by the enemy. So today's t message is titled, A Christian Suicide. We need firm biblical groundwork under our feet at a time like this. And so I want to try to take the Bible, God's word, okay, not man's word, God's word, and unfold these truths that I hope will give you a firm place to stand in the coming days and in the days of trials and tribulations. Some of the facts are saints sometimes feel so bad that they want to die. It is a sin to fulfill that desire by taking your own life. The only way sin can be forgiven is in our relationship to Jesus Christ by faith. Saving faith can be so weak that the heart gives way to grievous sin. Therefore, let this death not be in vain. Let it make us utterly committed to overcome the weakness of faith that costs him that Christian's life. Saints sometimes feel so bad that they want to die. Let's talk about Moses. Moses was under tremendous pressure from the people to take them back to Egypt. They were dissatisfied with his leadership after he had liberated them with God's hand from Egypt's oppression. And God himself has sent fire against the people. Moses says, I am not able to carry all these people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Look that up in Numbers chapter 11, verse 14 through 15. This is Bible, people. This is the word of God. Elijah had just endured the incredible strain of single-handedly opposing 400 priests of the idol Baal and the people of Israel and the king. God vindicated his faith and he ran exuberantly for miles in front of the king's chariot. Then he heard the king's wife, Jezebel. What a wicked spirit of modern days. What a wicked spirit. I rebuke that name in the name of Jesus Christ. Vowed to kill him. In his fear and exhaustion, he went into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my fathers. That is 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4. After Elijah has just single-handedly defeated all these pagan priests of Baal, by God descending the fire and burning the Holocaust and showing who was the true God and that God had backed him up. Here he is running away from a threat of a person that made to him. And that person was Jezebel. How? How? It happens. We're human. We're in the flesh. Let's talk about the prophet Jonah. Jonah displayed one of the most selfish attitudes out of all the prophets in being irritated that God had mercy on the pagan city Nineveh. And God rebuked him with a desert wind. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. That's Jonah. Chapter 4, verse 8. It is a sin to fulfill that desire by taking your own life. Committing suicide is sin for three reasons. 
First, it is disobedience to the command of God. You shall not murder. Exodus 20.13 And disobedience to God's commands is sin. Two, second is the presumption upon God's sovereign prerogative to give and take life. God alone can create a human person and therefore personhood belongs to God. God alone can create a human person and therefore personhood belongs to God, does not belong to us, to man. Abortion, that is illegal. That is suicide. That, that is plain genocide. That is killing. That is plain outward wrong. I don't care for whatever reason it is. It goes against the word of God. We have no right to dispose of ourselves or others as we please. The Lord has sole rights over what he has made. I'm going to repeat this. The Lord has sole right over what he has made. Murder and suicide intrude on the sacred ground where God alone is the giver and taker of life. Write it down. Murder and suicide intrudes on the sacred ground where God alone is the giver and taker of life. Third, it is a failure to trust in God for help needed to survive and cope. And the Bible says that whatever is not from faith is sin. You will find that in Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Therefore, we're on firm biblical grounds when we say it is sin to take your own life. The only way sin can be forgiven is in our relationship to Jesus Christ by faith. Every one of us is a sinner. It doesn't matter how many good things we do or have done. We have dishonored God by the meagerness of love to God and the shallowness of our trust in God and the inconsistency of our obedience to God. If we don't find a way for our sins to be forgiven, will we, be, we will be cut off from God forever because God is holy and cannot look with favor on sin. Nor can he sweep sin under the rug. As I was once told by a pastor, don't worry about it. We'll sweep it under the rug. Nobody will know anything about it. But I knew about it. But then again, that's another story that I have to tell you. Getting back into topic. It is of infinite consequence, and that's why God sent Jesus Christ, his son, into the world to die for sinners. The prophet Isaiah foresaw this great sending of the suffering Messiah. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that, would, that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53. Four through six. Write it down. Memorize it. This is a victory verse. Jesus Christ came into the world and fulfilled this great Jewish prophecy by dying on the cross and becoming a curse for those who trust in him. 
And I'm going to repeat this to you again. Jesus Christ came into the world and fulfilled this great Jewish prophecy by dying on the cross and becoming a curse for those who trust in him. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. His apostle Peter said, To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. You'll find that on Acts 10 verse 43. So the issue for every one of us is, do we have a relationship of faith with Jesus Christ so that our sins are forgiven? It is the most precious gift in the world. And there is no other way for a sinner to get to God than through the shed blood of God's Messiah, God's only Son, the name above all name, Jesus Christ, and by trusting in his name. No amount, I want you to listen, no amount of good works can earn God's salvation. No amount. For we all have fallen short of the glory of God and we all have sinned. And no amount of bad works disqualifies a person from God's converting grace. I'm going to repeat to you again. And write this down. Please jot it down. And no amount of bad work disqualifies a person from God's converting grace. A thief hung on a cross next to Jesus as he was dying. His life was one total waste of sin and unbelief. And in that last moment, his eyes were opened and he threw himself on the mercy of the king of the universe and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus, with all sovereignty, of all who would not be defeated by death said, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus forgave him. Jesus forgave him. Forgave him. And he was a sinner. Why? Because he had faith and believed. He wasn't baptized. He didn't do the act of confession. Of all these sometimes things that we put in place to make it difficult to reach God. But God himself made it so easy and say, today you will be with me in heaven. Just because of faith. And you will find that in Luke 23, 42 through 43. In the 11th hour, a lifetime of sin and unbelief can be forgiven by faith in Jesus Christ. In the 11th hour, a life of sin and unbelief can be forgiven by faith in Jesus Christ. It's never too late until you take your last breath. Saving faith can be so weak that the heart gives way to grievous sin. Or to put it another way, those who are truly forgiven for their sins and accepted by God forever can give way temporarily to temptation and fall into sin. The biblical evidence for this is the seventh chapter of Romans describes how Christians struggle with the remaining corruptions in our lives. Romans 7.15 I do not understand my actions, for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. That was Paul. Philippians 3.12. Now that I am, am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. 1 John 1 through 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Matthew 6, 12, Jesus says, we should not only pray for daily bread, but for daily forgiveness too. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Saving faith can be so weak at times that the heart gives way to the grievous sin.
But this does not mean that the saving relationship with Christ goes in and out of existence with each of our sins. When a believer yields to temptation, his faith in Christ is weak, and the enticements of sin and the power of Satan get the upper hand. But there is a great difference. Listen, there is a great difference between Satan getting a temporary upper hand and Satan being the Lord of life. Totally different. There is a great difference between yielding with resistance to an evil that I hate to do and doing that evil as part of the usual pattern of my life. The evidence of the master's hand is the warp and wolf of the fabric, not the snags on our threads. In the year, in the years, you might have a friend with unbelief. Or you have friends that are in belief right now, just like you have family members. He was, he or she was like a captive in a concentration camp, far behind the lines of Satan's territory. Like all of us at one time or another, he had given himself over to the side of the enemy by refusing to trust in Christ. The result was a kind of numbness towards spiritual things. That's what happens when we are out of God's coverage, when we're out of God's cloud, when we're out of God's purview out of God's sight we become numb towards the spiritual things and that is one of Satan's weapons also then one day it appears that Jesus sent himself to penetrate the lines of Satan's territory break through the fences of the concentration camp and shock him out of the stupor of his unbelief but as they were leaving the concentration camp the sirens went off the ensuing combat was fierce. The demons were following after him that was set free from God, from his stupor of his unbelief. Okay? The sword was knocked out of his hands and the shield slipped on his arm. And the deceptive dart of deception sank so deep into his heart that he fell in the combat. He died. And where was Jesus? We believe he caught him when he fell and carried him home. So being killed in that field of combat while he was converted and was escaping the enemy's camp, God had caught him because he had believed on the 11th hour on the salvation of Jesus Christ. You can no more grasp my wartime strategies than a child can read the graphs of the chief of staff. And remember, if I hadn't broken through the prison of his unbelief, you would never have seen them again. Therefore, let this death not be in vain. Let it make us utterly committed to overcome the enemy that brought him to the grave. Give his death worth and meaning by letting it make you hate sin and Satan and unbelief. Let it make you earnest about spiritual things. Let it strip you of unbelief. Let it be his last loud cry against the dangers of the powers of darkness. What could honor him more? than to let his death be a covenant between you and him, sealed with his own blood. That you from this day forth will fight with all your might the enemy that brought him to his grave. That you will wear the whole armor of God and that you will take the sword of the spirit, the Bible, and practice with that sword so regularly, so diligently, so earnestly that you become valiant for the Savior. Who did not leave him blind, broken the prison walls of his unbelief and caught him when he fell. Let's talk about another one. 
another one of God's judges. Where do we leave Samson? When he was caught captive, when he was stripped down, when his eyes were pulled out, when he was whipped, where his hair was cut, he had lost all his power, all his might. But the most important thing, he had lost his communion with God. And his power did come from God. He was tied one day in this town hall, in this building of the Philistines. He was torn, he was tied up from pillar to pillar that had enslaved him. And he pleaded with God to be with him one more time. He said, God, forgive me. But give me the victory for your kingdom one more time. And at that time, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon Samson one more time. And he pulled down the pillars of which he was captive. And now he was set free. And everything fell down and killed all those Philistines that had enslaved them and were against Israel. And thus they were all killed. Now, Samson died in this process. Some say that it was suicide. It was a type of suicide. I don't know. I don't know if it was suicide. Why? Because he has spoken to God. And said, God, give me your power one more time to defeat your enemies. And God gave him the supernatural power to defeat the enemies. But at the end, it cost him his life. So did he sacrifice himself? Give his life for another? Or was it suicide? I guess we can never really know until we meet God face to face. And I ask him that question, oh, I meet Samson. But in my heart, he has spoken to God and God gave him the power and the authority. The only thing that he did suffer was death. Death for his sin. For not having been listening to God. So he paid it with his life. But he did not lose faith in God. Therefore, to me, his salvation was intact. To the eleventh hour. What could honor him more than to let his death be a covenant between you and him, sealed with his own blood, that you from this day forth will fight with all your might? And that's what Samson did. So, it's safe to let it be known, yeah, that it is a sin to commit suicide. God's word is very clear. We went over it. But we also know that God has mercy on who he has mercy on. God has grace on who he has grace. Grace is sovereign. God is sovereign. God is God and he can do whatever decision he might. So it all depends under the circumstances under which that suicide was done. And we will never know. And that's why we must never judge. Because we never know what was that person's faith at that 11th hour with this creator. All I say is that if you are experiencing these thoughts, it is my deep and honest prayer 
that the Holy Spirit touch you at this very moment and erase those thoughts from your mind and trains your hands for the fight. That he brings you up as a strong warrior for the kingdom of God. That he fortifies your faith and that your faith is fortified by the word, the sword of God. Don't let yourself fall into that temptation. Don't fall into the pity party. Satan loves pity parties because that's when we are alone. That's where we are vulnerable. That's when we, the sheep, have run away from the herd and we have run away from the shepherd. And the sheep without the shepherd cannot be protected. And the wolves know that. The wolves are not afraid of the sheep. The wolves are afraid of the shepherd. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Surprise, you can also follow us on Twitter. Okay, and our handle on Twitter is A the Desert. That's where you're gonna find the voice in the desert at the handle A the Desert. Okay, so follow us there so you can uh, get our tweets throughout the day and uh, some encouraging messages. You can also listen to our podcast uh, in iHeartRadio. All you have to do is search for a voice in the desert uh, and like us there and put us down as your favorite. And you can listen to us on your daily commute as you're going back and forth in your car uh, and listen to us in, as, uh, at your leisure or at your home. Okay. If you think that was enough, we got another surprise. You can find us at iTunes, okay? On Podcast iTunes. Just search for A Voice in the Desert, and you're going to find us right there. And all you have to do is subscribe to it. And anytime a new podcast is out, uh, it will automatically be downloaded onto your device, okay? You can also follow us at Stitcher Radio. All you have to do is uh, search for A Voice in the Desert. You're going to find us, follow us, and you'll be able to listen to us at your leisure. Okay, and uh, but always uh, your first recourse should be a www.avoiceinthedesert.net. There you will have all our archive, latest message, latest messages, and also uh, downloaded uh, materials that uh, we provide for you for your learning experience. Okay, once again, thank you for listening to us. God bless you, and uh, can't wait to give you our next message on next week. Okay, take care. Bye. Tell your friends and family about us. Please follow us on Facebook and subscribe via iTunes.